our uh, honorable uh, speakers led by uh, Young Guns um, Roadshow Manager, Deputy Speaker, uh, and Quezon Representative uh, David J.J. Suarez. And of course, the Young Guns uh, members, puro Young Guns pala tayo uh, this morning. House Assistant Majority Leader and La Union, 1st District Representative Paulo Ortega, the PIP. Assistant Majority Leader and Lanao del Sur, 1st District Representative Sia Alonto Adyong. Assistant Majority Leader and Ako Bicol, Party List Representative Raul Angelo Gil Bongalon and Dabao Oriental 2nd District Representative Chino Miguel D. Almario. Sir, we invite you for your uh, short um, opening remarks. Differ according to age. Um, anyway, thank you so much um, to our partners and friends in media. Uh, sa pagkakataon na muli namin po kayo makasama sa araw ng Miyerkules. Um, we will uh, continue to work hard on our last day before we go on break. And we want to thank everybody, especially the media, for being our partners in um, making sure that the proper information and the proper uh, message about what's going on uh, with matters of the house is being relayed to our um, brothers and sisters here in the country. And at muli, uh, nandito po kami upang sagutin ang ilan sa mga katanungan at uh, paglilinaw na nais nyo pong malaman tungkol po sa Kongreso. Kaya maraming maraming salamat. Uh, good morning. Um, it's our last day uh, of session and uh, I'm very much uh, parang ma na ma mamimiss ko tong ganito kasi medyo magbe-break tayo but I would like to take this time to greet uh, of course yung mga kadistrik ko naman sa kayong province namin uh, na imbaga aldaw tayo amin dito first district in probinsya tila union na uh, magnamnama kayo nga tiara ramidan mitoy kahit pagsyaatan amin san la dito yung probinsya nga la union batintero nga uh, Lao Lao Pilipinas. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Marina Aldo Sagabos, and it's happy to be back here and uh, be seated with this uh, gentleman and uh, looking forward for a fruitful discussion this morning. Thank you. Uh, my name is and uh, again, it's a pleasure to be part of this uh, panel for this morning. And hopefully, uh, we can uh, answer your questions, uh, no matter how how uh, how ex uh, easy. <laughs> but yes, um, looking forward to a fruitful uh, dialogue and discussion with you guys. No, uh, again, you can rest on us as members of the house to inform you and be transparent with you in everything that we do and everything that we aspire for for the country. So again, dagang salamat, maing punta karatuntanan. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, mapiya ka pipitar ka no uh, Again, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I'm honored to be to be sitting alongside uh, some of the finest members of the 19th Congress, especially DSJJ, our roadshow manager. <laughs> uh, again, I'm very happy to be here and I look forward to a positive engagement. Uh, and uh, discussions later on. Uh, just want to greet uh, my, again, my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, a happy Ramadan. Thank you, sirs. Uh, may we hear the first question from Isa Bendanyo Omali uh, from uh, GMADCWB. Hello po, magandang umaga. I have two questions lang naman. First question po kay D.S. Suarez. Ngayon po na huling araw ng session before ng Holy Week break, ano po yung mga aasahan natin? Ano po yung mga particular the house bills or resolutions na pagtitibayin po today? Thank you po. Well, unang-una, <clears throat> I'd like to congratulate uh, Speaker Martin Romualdez and the members of the 19th Congress. Um, for the swift approval of all legislative um, agendas asked and requested of us by the executive. 
pagdating po sa mga LEDAC priority measures at pagdating po sa mga SONA priority measures, um, lahat po ito um, napagtuunan ng pansin at naaprubahan na po ng mababang kapulungan. Pagdating po sa mga kinikailangan pa po namin maaprubahan, ilan po sa mga highlights for today will be the approval of RBH7 on third and final reading. Um, at saka number two, um, something very um, close to my heart dahil ako po yung nag-deliver ng privileged speech tungkol dito nung nakaraang uh, taon, yung tungkol po sa SMNI. At maliban din po doon, we still have a number of uh, house measures that need to be approved on third and final reading before we go on break. Uh, as you have noticed, the past two weeks have been very busy dito po sa House of Representatives. Pagdating po sa pag address po namin sa mga national bills and also local bills that need um, appropriate action by, the, by Congress. So yun po yung mga highlights natin for Wednesday. Second question pa for everyone na rin po, pwede pong sumagot. Si U.S. State, of, uh, State Secretary uh, Anthony Blinken po ay bumisita sa Pilipinas. Nakausap po niya si President Marcos Jr. And he reaffirmed yung ironclad support and commitment na tutulungan po ng U.S. ang Philippines uh, sa gitna po ng tension sa West Philippine Sea. Your thoughts lang po. Thank you. Uh, for me, that's a, a good sign. No? Um, we... We have seen the president uh, visit other countries. Para ang dating po naman, hindi lang po uh, project fishing, investment fishing. But of course, the president is doing his job in terms of, of course, strengthening our ties with uh, our allies. And this is a practice not only of the country, but other countries as well. So, um, malaking bagay po na meron po tayong ganong commitment kasi nakikita po natin na hindi nag-iisa ang Pilipinas. Maraming salamat. Well, we've been, we've been asserting our rights, uh, our sovereignty and territorial integrity over the West Philippine Sea. And any support to push uh, further that assertion is, is a welcome and positive development, especially it coming from the longest ally of the Philippines, which is the United States of America. It only reaffirms the commitment of uh, our allies in the West to make sure that the Philippine territorial integrity and sovereignty is respected, and the Philippines, uh, in geographic lo geographical location in the in the ASEAN and in the in the Pacific, is a both a strategical and uh, and logical uh, strategically important in the interest of. Uh, the United States in, a, in keeping a regional uh, keeping regional stability intact. So I, I guess sa tama nga po yung sinabi ni Congressman Pao na ang ating presidente has been very very uh, vocal in his both in his actions and his words in trying to protect the country not even a single inch of our territory will he surrender. And that is actually a moral booster for this administration and as well as uh, as a support no for uh, for the Philippines to really impose its territorial integrity in the region. Um, so I'd just like to add on a little bit. No, uh, I think um, the fact that there is a country that highly supports and by the term ironclad uh, highlights also the amount of trust that our allies have put in us as well. And this would not have been possible without the efforts of everyone in the administration, especially to our president who has been tirelessly looking for connections for allies and also enhancing them in the meantime. And uh, we'd like to thank as well the, uh, the efforts no, of the administration. This would not have been possible without that. And so far, us here in the, uh, in the Congress, uh, if, if, if there is any need for us to supplement and to further enhance the, the ties uh, through legislation, then we'd be more than happy to do so as well. Uh, let me add on the statements made by my colleagues. Um, of course, we greatly appreciate the uh, statement by Secretary Blinken in reaffirming his commitment in uh, defending the uh, Philippines uh, with respect to the uh, sovereignty and the territorial integrity. Um, this message of uh, commitment and reaffirmation sends a powerful message that uh, there is a solidarity and support. In other words, 
um, we stand united no, in safeguarding uh, regional uh, peace and security. Thank you. Para lang uh, madagdagan ko yung mga nabanggit ng aking mga minamanage na young guns. Um, Unang-una ho ay maganda po ito dahil pinakikita po nito na napakatibay po at napakaganda ng relasyon ng Pilipinas at ng Amerika. At bilang pagpapakita po nito ay uh, yung ironclad commitment is a show that they support Philippine sovereignty, uh, especially in what is happening in the West Philippine Sea and in certain parts of our country. Um, number two, it's also a positive development dahil other than the recent visit of Secretary Blinken, alam po natin nung nakaraang linggo, meron din pong uh, trade mission ang bumisita galing sa U.S. headed by the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, if I'm not mistaken. At doon, nagpakita din sila ng suporta sa pamamagitan ng pledges in the billions of dollars. So, um, if we put both together, we see that the, the partnership and the relationship of the U.S. and the country is an, uh, in an all-time high um, when it comes to security and when it comes to economy. And if I'm not mistaken, in the next month, magkakaroon po ng trilateral um, meetings sa U.S. to be attended by our president and um, Japan and the U.S. And again, they will talk about um, uh, issues that concern uh, the three nations. So this indeed is a positive development para po sa ating lahat. And we look forward to um, seeing more U.S. investors coming into the country. And at the same time, makita din po natin na mapangalagaan din po natin yung kapakanan ng ating mga Pilipino at mga OFWs na nagtatrabaho sa Amerika. Na alam, na, alam naman po natin na napakarami po nila doon. So, yun po. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you po. Thank you, Isa. Uh, let us recognize Tina Panganiban Perez of GMA7. Good morning po, sirs. Uh, Majority Leader Dalipe has um, mentioned the option of bringing RBH7 to the COMELEC after it is passed on third reading here, even without Senate action on RBH6. Your stand, po, sirs. Um, thank you, ma'am. Um, of course, the stand of the the ideal the ideal setup is dumaan po sa Kongreso muna. Um, yun po ang ninanais ng namin, of course, uh, para po it's also a time to reconnect with the Senate. So, for me, personally, gusto po natin na dumaan po sa dating proseso at uh, titignan po natin uh, kung paano magre-responde ang Senate. Yeah, with relation to the statements of uh, Majority Leader uh, Manix Dalipe, um, ito po kasing uh, tinatahak natin is uncharted waters. Um, especially we are in a very advanced state of amending our constitution. Advanced because it is in the first time in our nation's history that the Senate is actually tackling um, constitutional amendments with RBH 6 at tayo with RBH 7. So, in statements ni Congressman Manix Dalipe, uh, echo yung nakasulat sa Constitution na pagkatapos po with three-fourths vote, um, COMELEC being the rightful agency, uh, will have to conduct a plebiscite. Um, but with the directive of our uh, speaker and siguro ito na rin ang pinakamagandang at prudent na daan dahil nga sa maaaring mga constitutional challenges na haharapin ng RBH6 at ng RBH7 na alam ko may ilang mga sektor na naghahanda na, ang mas magandang paraan para sa ating lahat ay i-maximize po natin itong uh, Holy Week break na makapag-usap yung <clears throat> leadership ng House at leadership ng Senate and to reconcile on a definitive path kung paano po natin i-approach at uh, ihahakbang ang RBH6 at RBH7 papunta po sa COMELEC para makarating sa plebisito. Dahil kung ano man ang pag-usapan ng Senado at ng Kongreso, 
dapat po natin ibigay ang kapangyarihan sa tao para makapagdesisyon kung ano po ang nararapat para sa ating bansa. Hindi po dapat natin nakawin ang pagkakataong ito sa mamamayang Pilipino. So yun po yung uh, tema ng statements ni, ni Majority Leader Manix Dalipe. But again, to avoid any constitutional issues and challenges that it will eventually face, it's better for us to work as a united house with Congress and Senate uh, working hand in hand. Um, basically, ang the House of Representatives naman for the past several months, uh, very strong and very consistent po yung ating messaging sa ating taong bayan na we really want to push for the RBH 7. Uh, we really want to revisit the Constitution, amend the economic, restrictive economic provisions para po medyo umunlad ng ating bansa. There are so many opportunities outside that we might want to hold on to. Like, for example, yung mga opportunities that other ASEAN countries are enjoying, Indonesia, Vietnam, Singapore, uh, and etc. cetera. Uh, doon naman po sa, uh, doon what, what are the ways in order for us to push uh, RBH7? Uh, there are so many options po na kung gusto din ho namin, uh, gusto ho namin i-explore. Una, of course, we want the Senate to really act on the, their promise to the President. Uh, since the since the the time that the, the this ad new administration come into office, uh, nagkaroon po ng several meetings ang leadership of the House uh, and the Senate uh, with the President, uh, re reassuring their pledges na kailangan talagang suportahan ang ating administration para palawakin pa yung economic provisions ng ating bansa. And the House of Representatives has delivered that promise. Uh, we just want that the Senate also to do their share, part of the bargain, so that we can push this as what the Constitution says. But since what, is, what, is, what we are experiencing right now and what we are seeing, there's been a, uh, ano, there's been a delay. Yung original po na timeline natin, which is to pass the, uh, both, uh, the uh, resolution of both houses, I think the original timeline is before the Lenten break. Now, ito po yung last day natin. And hindi pa ho sila natatapos sa Senado. So, of course, uh, as part of our commitment and our seriousness in pushing for economic cha-cha that would benefit not only certain sections in our society but, but the whole of the country, we are open to any options. And we are trying to explore these options legally uh, within the framework of the Constitution as what the Constitution says because we are very conscious of what the Constitution says and the formulation of the Constitution in so far as voting of both houses. Ang sinabi naman po doon, may katabi akong lawyer, baka i-coach niya akong uh, mamaya, sinabi talaga doon is uh, three-fourth votes of uh, all members of Congress. They can already transmit that. Now, tama nga po yung sinabi ni DS, uh, JJ, na should there be any... Um, any reaction that may come from the other chamber na hindi po siya sang-ayon doon sa stand ng ating majority leader, that would be a good, in good, that's a good readings for me because that would open up an opportunity for the courts to really decide on and spell out ano ba talaga ang limits ng uh, pagbotohan. Ito ba ay to uh, independently separate from each other or can one chamber of Congress do their share and then later on the other chamber can also follow suit. It's a good opportunity for the courts to really lay down uh, their decision. Kung meron pong ganong classing event, should there be an event that the House so decides to really push what, uh, what the majority leader uh, has said uh, previously po. Well, uh, to add, to, um, what is crucial here is that the Senate and the House of Representatives should come together to discuss the possible implications of RBH 6 and RBH 7. Uh, namanggit po kanina ni uh, Deputy Speaker J.J. Suarez that this Holy Week break, we should take advantage of this time to reflect on the importance of having a united stand <coughs> and a collaborative effort in shaping our future's economy. So... Ultimately, inaasahan naman natin that this will face a constitutional challenge and that is being expected in this kind of uh, situation. But 
what is important here is that the legislative department, the Congress of the Philippines, has a united stand. Anyway, ang uh, bottom line po dito is that I'm asking the Senate leadership not to cooperate and to make good of its uh, commitment to uh, deliver their uh, commitment to this administration to amend the restrictive economic provisions of the 1987 Constitution. Uh, halos inubos na ata nila lahat, no? <laughs> but uh, to at least on a personal um, observation, um, it is one thing to say uh, what you would want the people to hear, and it's another as well to make do with what you have committed, especially in public. And I would just also like to, I'd like to join my fellow colleagues in calling out also on the Senate, at least to, um, to show the people on what a, united, uh, uh, what a united Congress can do for the country. The goal is simply, uh, the goal has always been the same. No? It's just different translations, but the goal is for the Philippines to flourish further, to improve further. So one of the ways that we find would be, uh, we find that would help uh, improve the Philippines is through the RBH 6 and RBH 7. So that being said, if ever that this pushes through, then the people can and will see true progress happen because of this as well. So, lahat naman nasabi na ng colleagues ko, pero let's just hope that, you know, both uh, houses would come together to at least give the people a taste of what a truly united Congress can deliver to the country. Sir, I have another question. Several lawyers asked the Supreme Court yesterday to direct the House and the Senate to enact a law against political dynasties. Nasa Constitution daw po ito, pero uh, 37 years na wala pa rin batas. Your position po. Um, well, uh, the group of lawyers no, went to the uh, Supreme Court uh, and asking to compel Congress to enact uh, anti-dynasty law. So, well, uh, we have a provision under the 1987 Constitution which states that the state shall guarantee equal opportunities for public service and prohibit uh, political dynasties as may be defined by law. And as we all know, the power to legislate laws is vested in Congress. So I don't think that uh, a group of individuals or even a group of lawyers can ask the Supreme Court to compel us. It is incumbent upon the members of the legislative body to pass a law with respect to the uh, political dynasty uh, provision. Now, um, with respect to the uh, political dynasty law, what we have right now is the SK Reform Bill. Meron po doon na mga anti-dynasty provision. And uh, having said that, siguro yun po yung pwede natin pag-tignan, uh, uh, no? Kung uh, this will uh, uh, work in the Philippine setting. And uh, again, it is incumbent upon the members of the legislative body to pass and act a bill prohibiting dynasty in the public service. Thank you. Yeah. Ako naman in all practicality, alam mo, napakatalino po talaga at uh, nag-iba na rin po yung pamamaraan at pag-iisip at decision-making process ng electorate natin sa pagpili ng mga taong nagnanais maglingkod sa ating bansa. So, um, when it comes to that, I think um, the Filipino people can properly decide who and who are not incapable of doing that job. And let's not forget, we always put ourselves through a referendum when we seek re-election. So this will be the perfect place to find out whether or not you're performing um, below or above average or whether or not ninanais pa ng constituency mong magpatuloy ka sa paglilingkod mo. We've seen dynasties come and go in Philippine history and in Philippine politics. So I think what's important for us now is to focus on how we can further enhance yung, uh, number one, yung efficiency ng mga programs, 
and projects na pinatutupad ng ating ahensya at ng ating gobyerno. Um, ipakita din po natin na meron po talagang mas magandang bukas na nag-aantay para sa Pilipinas. Um, that's why ipinaglalaban po namin itong RB87 uh, na talagang may patupad na. So, um, with regards to um, the call of some lawyers to the SE, well, that is their right, that is their duty, and whatever the SC will decide on that, siguro antay na lang namin yon. pag dumating po sa Kongreso yon. So, but until such time, purely speculative, and we will just wait for the, for the efforts that the SC will take. <laughs> Sasagot na ba ako? Hindi, <laughs> uh, hindi, ano. Um, again, to echo the statements of my fellow members, uh, wala naman po talagang direktang yung term na political dynasty kasi nag elect po tayo. So I'd rather had, uh, have the, the call, the calling of political democracies kasi naman po, lahat naman po ng, ng election, lahat po tumatakbo. May check and balances naman po lahat yan. Sabi nga ni Kong JJ, eh, pag hindi ka gusto ng tao, hindi ka talaga nila iboboto. Lalo ngayon, the, uh, this is the era of different kinds of media, social media, traditional media, new media. People can see if you're really working. Nakikita po ng tao ko na yung output natin. And in terms of the the group of lawyers which are going to file, uh, antayin po natin yon. And of course, ang kongreso naman po, you have seen it even with the RBH. Napaka-open po ng kongreso in terms of dialogues, mga iba-ibang debates. So, we na welcome po natin yon. Thank you. Uh, ako naniniwala po ako sa democratic process. The many options we have, the better. Uh, ganun po yung paniniwala ko eh. I just don't find it ano, uh, appealing to me personally that you would disqualify a certain individual merely on the basis of blood relation. Uh, pangalawa po, uh, sa akin, yung kanina na they appeal to the Supreme Court, I think hindi po ako tayo abogado. But what I understand is that the courts can only decide on matters na merong first controversy Meron pong na-files before their sala and meron pong legal questions. No? But in this case, it's actually a question of uh, the, con the Constitution's provision uh, having a uh, re required by the Constitution that specific provision for Congress to pass an enabling law. Ako, basis ko lang po ang sa akin is Marami po tayong in many instances and men in this in the past several elections that we had. Meron pong mga magkakaapelyo diyan na hindi naman ho sila na sustain. Pangalawa in our case, no, I want to understand where I'm coming from and this may be come this might come for us as a nuance, no. Sa area ko po in the in the barm, marami pong magkakalaban diyan sa barangay, mayor na magkakaapilido magkakaapilido sila magkapatid minsan mag, uh, mag minsan at some cases magama magano so if we disqualify on the basis of that wala na pong kandidato sa amin so mauubos po di ba so why limit the space for the electorate to choose from ako mas naniniwala ko sa marami pong uh, options uh, mas mas mabuti po sa ating demokrasya at sa ating electorate. Ang pinakakailangan lang po naman talaga is yung informed decision ng electorate. Which I believe, if you ask me, I would rather revisit our political system. Uh, I mean, party. Party system. party system in the country. Have it matured. Magkaroon ng convention. Kung sino yung mananalo sa convention based on merits. And the members of that party would vote like what they're doing in the United States, and in Malaysia, and many other countries. I would rather have that than to limit the space for the electorate to choose. Ang, ang election po is not, sabi nga po ni DSJJ, hindi lang huyan referendum. It is a dictation of what would happen in the future. Let us not remove that right from our electorate. Yeah, just on a final, on a final note on that, no? meron din kasing argument na nagsasabi, uh, paano ba nabubuo yung mga dynasties? 
And one reason why dynasties are formed is because the existence of term limits. Di ba? Pag natapos na yung term ng isa, syempre, ang, dahil nakasaad yun sa batas, ang ninanais nung uh, nag-umpisa, may pagpatuloy to. Kaya uh, tumatakbo yung mga kamag-anak. So tama po yung sinabi ni Congressman Ajong. If we really want to achieve reform, we need to look at the whole political reform agenda. And I think that is just one aspect that we need to uh, focus on. Uh, we also need to look at how to strengthen our political parties. We also need to revisit also, again, itong ang sinasabi nyo, itong mga political dynasties. Uh, we also need to, to revisit other aspects in our uh, political uh, law that affect and see how we can further improve when it comes to electing uh, better uh, statesmen, better representatives, better mayors, better governors, better senators, and of course, better you know, for the whole country. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't really give inputs specifically on how the law, entail, uh, how the law um, provides for this. However, um, I'd like to share at least a, a, an insight that resonates very personally. And this is uh, with regards to public acceptability. I think that in every area in the Philippines, everybody knows who their candidates are. Kasi nga, local, mga kandidato usually. Or sometimes in the case of uh, national representations, there are other sectors that also resonate, resonate with the candidates that they choose. So that being said, um, we are looking into how the people trust those that are willing to run for a position in government. And you've seen, uh, as what DSJJ uh, said earlier, you've seen political dynasties come and go. And this is evidence in itself of how the people choose their leaders. Now, to modify or to, to try to change at least, you know, uh, or to increase limitations on who can run, no matter how deserving, might be something that uh, needs further study, as what was mentioned by my colleagues earlier. So again, political uh, dynasties um, with regards to you know the their appeal to the lawyers appeal to the SC would merit uh, additional studies because number one we don't want to infra uh, we don't want to um, take away the power of choice from the people it is ultimately the choice of the locality of the people of the Philippines on who they trust to run for office who they trust to lead in their areas and of course who to trust in trying to make their lives better for you know for the people so you know thank you sirs thank you tina uh from manila bulletin elson kismorio you are recognized for your questions hello kongs good morning po this is for our roadshow manager <laughs> uh regarding po yung ano we made the call to the senate po no to like we reached out to them to para to hold dialogues during holy week has there been any feedback, sir? And kung wala pa, how would you reiterate such call? Kasi ba mamaya, they think it's not urgent. Um, well, the Senate President issued a statement when he was in the Czech Republic with the President. At sinabi niya doon, on track yung Senate when it comes to constitutional amendments. So pag sinabi mong on track, ang understanding ko noon, Nasa proseso sila at nasa daan ng pag-approve nito and on schedule. So, kaya nga po, ang mahalaga para sa atin is ito pong panahon na break ang Senate and break ang Congress, mas maraming pagkakataon na makapag-usap. Dahil itong mga nakalipas na linggo, masyadong abala sa trabaho, masyadong abala sa legislative work, masyadong abala sa mga bills na kailangan maipasa, Siguro hindi po nabibigyan ng pagkakataon na makapag-usap yung both chambers you know, in, in a more friendly atmosphere where we can actually find a common ground and an agreement moving forward. 
So I'm still very hopeful sa mga kaibigan po natin sa Senate na mabigyan ng pagkakataon tong Holy Week break na makapag-usap. And I'm sure um, ito din po yung ninanais ng mga kaibigan po natin mga senador pagdating po sa bahagi ng mga um, kinatawan dito po sa Kongreso na makausap din po kami kung ano po ang gagawin natin because you know we all want to achieve a common goal. I think what's um, hindering us from achieving that is the processes and certain impediments that can only be achieved that can only be addressed kung makakapag-usap yung dalawa. So I'm still very hopeful uh, pagdating po dun sa members in the Senate. And we just had our LEDAC yesterday. At very warm naman yung mga senators, di ba? Wala naman pong problema. So mukhang uh, maganda po talagang uh, outlook ang positivity pagdating sa pag-uusap ng dalawang chamber. Was it brought up uh, during the LEDAC po, yung, yung Holy Week Dialogue? Um, it was not taken up during the LEDAC. Um, we were focused... Kahit sa sidelines po? No, no. Huh? Kahit po sa sidelines? Um, no, it was not. Um, we were focused more on what was on the agenda, which were the legislative priority uh, measures of the president, where we are, what needs to be approved, and what is pending. And what's happy to note, pagdating doon sa what needs to be approved, what is pending, dito po sa Congress... Uh, under the leadership of Speaker Martin Romualdez, 100% uh, ang submission rate namin. In fact, yung ibang hinihingi ng NEDA, naipasa na po ng mababang ka, ng, uh, kongreso. So hindi lang po kami mabilis magtrabaho, advance pa yung trabaho namin. So this goes to show yung uh, tireless effort na pinakikita ng mga congressmen pagdating sa paggagampan nila ng trabaho bilang mga mambabatas. Uh, just one more question po. Uh, uh, Comelec Chairman Garcia actually said po, this is regarding po yung sinabi po ni Majo Dalipe na uh, uh, his suggestion to transmit RPH uh, 7 ahead of the Senate. Sabi po ni Chairman Garcia, they intend to seriously study yung pong proposal ni Majo. Majo. Just your thoughts po on that. Thank you. Um, we welcome the statement of uh, Comelec Chair uh, George Garcia no? because this shows uh, proactiveness and nakikita ho natin yung sense of urgency. So having said that, uh, kung ito pong RBH7 ay isumitin na po sa Comelec and for a possible conduct of a plebiscite, ultimately our main goal here is for the, for the Filipino people to decide whether they are in favor on these economic amendments. Yun na po kasi talaga, yun talagang hinihintay ho natin, ano? na masobrang tagal na, sobrang panahon na, na naantala because of these uh, challenges. And uh, may dagdag ko lang, ito pong uh, RBH7 or yung RBH6 sa Senado, sana magkaroon po kami ng common ground on how we will uh, uh, fix no the uh, impasse with respect to both resolutions and uh, again um kung ito po ay isusumit eh, sa COMELEC for a possible conduct of a plebiscite tanging Filipino people lamang ang uh, mga kapag decision dito, dito it's not this is what we want but this is what uh, we want for the Filipino people and for the common good. At bibigyan natin no, ng pagkakataon ang ating uh, sambayan ng Pilipino na mag-participate dito po sa usaping pagdidesisyon at pag-aambyanda ng 1987 Constitution. Parang pareha lang kami ng sagot. Na, uh, actually, but uh, kanina I've answered na we still uh, we're still very optimistic with the route yung usual na rota ng ng mga resolutions which is to go to the senate and syempre um pagkasunduin yung resolution of both houses uh, and yun nga sabi nga ni ni Kong Jill na it's a a very proactive uh, part ng COMELEC po na as early as now mas pwede na rin nilang aralin yung yung, yung rota na yun so, yun lang naman. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Elson. Uh, Billy Vegas from Abante Politico. Magandang umaga po. Hingi lang po sa ng thoughts nyo dun sa kumakalat sa social media na ipadisbar daw po si former Congressman Chong regarding doon sa sinabi niya kay First Lady. Uh, sa prayer na alam ba? Ako ata pinauna nila kasi para objective yung aking <laughs> pananaw. No, I, I just don't want to be the one to remind you of what your Bible says in, in treating women. I, I, I presume, since it's a prayer rally and it's a part of a Christian uh, denomination, uh, ako from an outsider, um, ang in ko really is the messaging is about love, about unity, kasi that's what the Bible says, right? That's what Christianity says. Uh, and so to have somebody there on the platform uh, speaking about how to mistreat a specific individual, regardless whether she's a, the first lady or not, kasi babae siya, that is actually the exact opposite of what we, from the outside, looking at you Christians, would hope to hear from you. So, pangalawa, uh, yung move for a disbar move for disbarment kay Congress, uh, Congressman, I, I think yung mga ganong klaseng sentimento na sinasabi publicly using an event uh, that you, you, you are actually, you know, that many are looking at the you know, media, it's gaining more media attention kasi uh, connected ito doon sa kanilang leader na may mga pending um, cases. Uh, both houses are also, uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives are uh, in investigating. So of course, maraming nakatutok dyan and using that platform to demean a, a, a particular person. And that kind of bold statement is actually at ano it it hits uh no straight to the sensitivity of 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 being a Filipino i think yung mga ganung grupo uh na pumupunta na na gusto na lang ipadisbar yung a certain individual former congressman it speaks about the, our collective sense of uh ano no yung our, our collective sense of being a Filipino na dapat irespetuhin ang dangal ng isang babae na respetuhin ang dangal ng isang tao, na huwag magsalita, lalong-lalo na kung ang isang event ay pinupush niya ay dapat pagmamahalan, pagre-respetuhan at unity sa bansa. Coming from a former uh, public servant, it's not only unbecoming of him as a person, but it's also un a unbecoming of him as a, pardon my, my language, as a Filipino and as a Christian. Sir, uh, Sir Billy, may, may nagkaso na ba? Uh, call pa lang po. Ah, call. Way. Okay. Um, I'll just answer this very short, uh, very short and sweet, sabi ko. Um, kung paano mo tatratuhin ang mga, kung paano mo tinatrato ang mga napakaganda, empowered, saka mga mabubuting kababaihan, eh, reflection yan kung paano mo tinatrato ang nanay mo. Yun lang masasabi ko. Before the lawyer speaks, um, ako naman, I've already uh, mentioned my position on this. <laughs> Ilalagay ko yung sarili ko sa sitwasyon na kung ito sinabi laban sa asawa ko, ano yung mararamdaman ko? Kung itong tao na ito sinabi ito laban sa misis, ko, sa misis ko o sa nanay, ano yung mararamdaman ko? Hindi ba disgusto? Hindi ba galit? I mean... He used to be a congressman. What happened to his honorable quote-unquote title that he holds? He's a lawyer. He knows what's wrong and what's right. That has no place in Philippine society to do that on TV, on stage, in front of millions of Filipinos. It has no place whatsoever. And if there is any legal ground to find him... Uh, to penalize him, uh, ako, I will support it. I will support it because I don't think there is no place in that in Philippine society. Well, uh, just to add, no, um, it pains me no, because the one who made this statement publicly is a lawyer. 
one who is uh, in the same uh, profession and uh, it reflects not to the legal profession so having uh, said that meron pong mga panawagan na imbestigahan at uh, file ng kaso for possible disbarment case and for me personally there is enough ground because as a lawyer in a legal profession we have this code of professional responsibility and accountability or cipra uh, it states basically that we have duties not just to our clients not just to the courts but to the society in general yun po kasi niyang statement no against first lady uh, marcos is a reflection that is something that is disrespectful not because the utterances was were made against the first lady but this attitude reflects towards the women in general and that is why this matter should be investigated by the proper authorities such, such as the uh, integrated bar of the philippines as well as the supreme court of the philippines so that we will uphold accountability <coughs> and uphold the integrity of the legal profession. I'd, like, I'd just like to add na rin, um, para nakalimutan natin yan na Women's Month ngayon. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, uh, okay, quite frankly, hindi ang makarelate kasi single ako. <laughs> Wala pang jowa, pero, I mean, um, the respect to women uh, is a very universal language no? across all, all populations, all religions, ev everything, you name it. And to, to disrespect one in any private setting is already bad enough. What more when you bring it to the public setting where there are, there's media coverage, there are people watching that I'm very sure None of them expected that kind of remark coming from him as well. So as what was mentioned kanina by Congressman Jill, now it is also conduct unbecoming of a lawyer who is practicing that particular profession. So kung my investigation, go. Because I don't think that the world, or the Philippines for that matter, deserves those in, prof in the profession that act like that. I think na, you know, it, 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 it really pains me. Uh, and what what was mentioned kanina with uh, uh, with DSJJ, na I'd imagine if that somebody said that to my mother, no, I'd be really enraged and disappointed. But again, um, I think that this needs to be looked into, and I hope that there are no cases that, or at least no other persons uh, that would replicate this kind of behavior. Go ahead. Uh, uh, magandang hapon po ulit. Ihahabol ko lang po. Baka meron pa ko yung reactions or comment dun sa bagong kontrato sa NAIA. Uh, panlaban daw dun sa ano, sa suro at dun sa daga. Well, it's a welcome development para sa uh, ating bansa. Ito pong uh, kontrata ng uh, nakuha ng San Miguel Group um, to run and operate NAIA. I think uh, it is a blessing for our country. Nakita naman natin na uh, isa po sa mga uh, pinagkakaguluhan na uh, destination ngayon sa Asia at mag sa mundo ay Pilipinas. And we want to make sure that, you know, when um, tourists, when Filipinos or whoever comes to the Philippines, they're properly um, attended to with the best facilities, world class. And unfortunately, um, looking at our airports now, we really need uh, major improvement and influx of enough capital to see improvements quickly. So, natutuwa po tayo dito at natutuwa din po tayo sa DOTR. I would like to congratulate, of course, Secretary uh, Jaime Bautista on, on this initiative together with, of course, our president, President Bongbong Marcos. Um, it will not only um, give uh, better services uh, to our Filipinos, but I think it's a clear sign also uh, for the rest of the country that the Philippines is moving towards the direction of being a first-class, world-class country when it comes to amenities and services being offered by the services of government. Uh, as, as somebody who travels, uh, you know, um, 
I think that the first impression of any tourist into any country is through the airport. And from that, it sets a, a subconscious benchmark to any tourist on what they would want to expect in the country that they're visiting. So for, for this uh, to push through, this uh, agreement, uh, this PPP agreement to push through, I think uh, President Bong Bong said it best, no? na first impressions are very important. And our, the first impression to everyone outside of the Philippines is through our airport. Now with this contract in place, I don't think na yung daga or ano, ano bang mga small critters lang yung uh, tinitingnan dito. But it is the lasting impression of any tourist that enters. Kasi before, uh, before anybody gets to surf, before anybody gets to enjoy our cuisine and whatnot, the first thing that they have to go through is through the airport. And so this is a very positive uh, development because this will also help uh, guarantee return visitors. If we have a beautiful airport, you know, some people even just like to stay in the airport kasi maganda yung airport nila, di ba? May iba nga na long layover flights, parang ayaw nila umalis na sa airport. Ganun kaganda yung mga airport na sa ibang mga bansa. And we would like to replicate or hopefully even uh, further enhance our airport to that degree that would allow the Philippines to put itself clearly on the map of the world as a very good destination to come visit, uh, starting with the airport and to every, every other destination within. Um, siguro sobrang excited po lahat actually sa development na to and we have seen the president uh, take action agad para sa ikagaganda po ng airport. Kung baga magiging, magiging social na po yung airport natin sa, of course, with the PPP. And of course, we know how San Miguel uh, operates its facilities. So baka wala na nga pong surot kasi social na. Sana wag maging bed bugs kasi social eh. <laughs> Tapos wala na ring apis, hindi na magiging, magiging cockroach. <laughs> Pero kidding aside, um, I think everyone is excited with this development. Especially, ang Philippines po kasi ay hot tourism destination pa rin. With all the the challenges that we are uh, faced with the the tourism facilities, yung mga ports, sa kayo mga mga destinations natin. Pero tignan nyo yung yung balik ng tao, kasi nga it's really an adventure to go to the Philippines. So like for us, uh, province po ng La Union, kasi parang ano na siya weekly ano siya weekly destination na po yung La Union. And with this, we can add we can add and attract more tourists, not only in the country but also our district as well. Thank you. Uh, I think any initiative or move to upgrade services uh, is a welcome development. I agree and I, I join the statements of my colleagues here. Na ang Pilipinas mo, we have also much to offer. No, uh, not only manpower. But we have uh, untapped resources here, and I'm talking about our tourist destinations. So, tama po yung sinabi ni Kong Chino. No, no, first, the first impression that you ha we would have is kung pupuntahan mo na, na bansa ay maganda yung, yung airport nila, di ba? Uh, sa Singapore, di ba? Gusto natin. Ako nga, pag pumunta ako the last time, ay, ayaw ko na lumabas. Tama nga yung sinabi niya, no? Ang dami pang mga shops doon, no? So let's make our future uh, tourists, no, foreign tourists, their first, when they set foot uh, here in the Philippines, let, let's, let's make it memorable to them. No? So first thing is, ano yung, ano yung pagdating nila na unang-una ng impression nila is maganda at talagang make sure na memorable na sa kanila yung experience on the first, when they first set foot here in the country, and that is our airport. Um, I guess uh, much have been said about the uh, NAIA uh, airport terminal wherein the San Miguel Corporation will take over these services. So uh, I guess uh, as a Filipino, we don't want to be remembered on something that is negative. And if we want to be remembered, <coughs> we want to be remembered on something that is positive. And that's why we welcome this as a positive development because uh, we will be offering not just for the Filipino tourists, but for the foreigners, 
uh, best service, best facilities, or overall best atmosphere. And we want to be remembered as one of the best airports in the world. So, aalisin na natin yung stigma na nung mga nakarang taon, lagi tayong napapasama sa may pinaka-worst airport in the world. So, with this, uh, we are looking forward and uh, we are very excited for the uh, best services that the San Miguel Corporation is going to offer. And that is something to be proud of as a Filipino. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Uh, the next question will be from uh, Dexter Baro II uh, from Manila Bulletin. Uh, hello, Kongs. Good morning. Um, recently, the PDA released an advisory warning the public about the emergence of marijuana-infused uh, e-cigarettes or vapes. Uh, this concern was raised after a recent uh, raid po sa Taguig City where these were confiscated. Uh, with this po, may we know if may plano po ba ang house to probe this incident? And also, general thoughts niya lang din po uh, regarding the issue of this marijuana-infused vapes given this you know looming threat to the public and especially minors. Uh, thank you po. Uh, I think this would be uh, this would merit a, an investigation between multiple committees. Um, one would most likely be health, uh, trade and industry, and maybe also dangerous drugs. And um, you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, back in 2019 there was a recorded case in Canada for a uh, a lung lung I'm sorry a vape related incident because that vape that was used had. <laughs> Uh, THC, which is a component in marijuana, laced and included in that particular vape, which caused a disease called popcorn lung, or I believe it is uh, called the bronchiolitis obliterans, if I'm not mistaken. And this is because it was an uncontrolled substance there. And seeing that this has been, uh, that th this has happened here, is a very alarming. Uh, very alarming fact. No? Uh, this would also be uh, a starting point on uh, how our uh, PDEA would start to lo uh, look into investigating on the production, on the possible import, or how, how was this distributed, because this is a very concerning matter. Um, if anything, based on the recommendations of our partners in the PDEA and maybe also in the PNP, uh, then we would uh, be able to tailor fit the legislation required in order to control those substances from uh, hopefully uh, that, that th these substances, uh, substances don't appear any further na than it has. It's a very dangerous thing now. And I'm glad that you brought it up. So yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, Chino, i-check mo yung vape mo. Mamaya. <laughs> well, ako, I, ako, ako, I support yung, kung should there be any probe, I will support that. Kasi I'm more concerned on drug, illegal drug trafficking eh, in the country. So nagiging creative na rin yung mga illegal drug traffickers. I, I really want uh, the Congress to really dig deeper into this. No, uh, Aside from yung Kasi bawal na talaga ang marijuana is classified as illegal drug. Apart from that, in nga ang concern ko is, sabi nga ni Kong Chino, the production, the entry of this. So medyo creative na yung mga illegal drug traffickers. I'm more concerned on that. So kung meron pong probe na gagawin, talagang susuporta po ako doon. Kasi this is, this is ang, ang vape po, it's, it's an... It's an option for the smokers. Na, yeah. Minsan, nagiging fad na siya. Eh. Maski yung mga hindi talaga mga yeah. smokers, yung magsishift sila from cigarettes to e-cigarettes, nagiging fad na po yan. Eh. So, that, they, they see that as a, as a, as a good market to, to, ano, no? to, capitalize, to capitalize on. And these illegal drug traffickers are using this vape kasi masyado na silang creative in order for them to really, ano, uh, ano no uh, makuha yung market and then increase their sale no ng illegal so kailangan talaga ng PDEA at kailangan i think ng uh, ng batas para dito ma-monitor at saka ma-penalize yung nagma-manufacture at nagbebenta at pumapasok dito ng mga ganung klaseng illegal drugs na ininfuse nila doon sa mga nagiging fad na ng mga e mga e-cigarettes and vape um to add uh, to this uh, issue well, uh, yes, I agree 
that uh, this warrant an investigation or probe by the uh, Congress. You know, one um, crucial matter no, to look into is that the, to <coughs> is the technology. Now, you, you know, as uh, technology, technology advances, nagiging creative din ito pong mga illegal uh, uh, drug dealers natin. No? So, in the in a way not to be identified or hindi po sila makikita agad, pinapasok nila sa vape. In a, making it appear that uh, this is just a usual uh, e-cigarette. Ano? So, um, this should serve as a reminder no, to everyone, especially to the youth, to the students, that the use of marijuana is, is still illegal. Although there are talks to oh, amend the RA 9165 or the Dangerous Drugs Act as amended, wherein there are talks to legalize the use of marijuana for medical purposes. But then again, uh, another issue which is uh, to be considered is also the law enforcement agencies. We should always be one step ahead against these uh, drug dealers in our fight against illegal drugs. Thank you. Just to uh, add on that note, no, I think um, it is necessary for us to ensure that the proper safeguards are in place. Um, tulad ng sinabi ni Congressman uh, Bongalon, ngayon po tinatalakay po dito sa uh, Kongreso yung legalizing ng cannabis for medical use. So, but with a with a proliferation of laced vape with with uh, THC or or with marijuana, just goes to show that um, we need to improve the safeguards just so that uh, hindi ma abuse yung uh, isang controlled substance dito po sa ating bansa. Number two, um, yes, we tr uh, support um, any. Uh, investigation probe to be conducted by the House uh, regarding this. And of course, we call on PDEA and we call on our enforcement agencies and bureaus uh, to step up uh, when it comes to improving mechanisms in uh, finding out, in investigating kung paano ito nakakapasok. And of course, at the end, yung talagang dapat nakikita natin nasa likuran na po sila ng rehas yung mga taong nasa likuran nito. Uh, we have heard uh, my fellow congressmen already uh, give their thoughts. Uh, illegal po yan. Illegal po ang marijuana. Illegal po yung paggamit ng marijuana sa Pilipinas. So dapat po huliin lahat ng mga nagdi-distribute saka ma-penalize po yung mga tao behind that. Even in Singapore, uh, the country even goes as far as yung bansa, dinidemanda po yung mga kumpanya na nagdi-distribute po ng ganyan. So I think with the investigation uh, being referred to Congress as well, baka we can explore things like that para po yung mga kumpanyang yan kung ginagamit man sila para mag-create uh, mag ng mas modern ways of ano, uh, dealing with drugs, eh dapat po na masampulan na talaga yung mga yan. Uh, can you just quickly, just slightly add also, I think this is not a uh, an isolated incident in terms of the reports of um, illegal substances being used alongside uh, uh, vape components. So case in point, um, I believe it was UK uh, who has had reports of these substances being used. And more popularly now, in, in the countries that allow the medical use of and consumption of marijuana, um, some companies have gone as far as to extract oils for them to be used in vape devices. So I think with that being, uh, you know, with that knowledge, uh, we can also promote the, uh, not really promote, but more of um, we can try to urge the, uh, our enforcement agencies to look into what is being practiced also outside so that we have a clear image as to what we should look for within our country as well. So again, let me reiterate that it is an illegal substance. If anything, there were no studies also made on what these pose if it is mixed in a manner of inhalation, in this case, on vapes. So very, it's also very dangerous to, to the health of, of an, any individual. So again, we would support the, any probe regarding this matter. 
Thank you, Dexter. I uh, acknowledge uh, Kat Porbes from Radio Pilipinas for uh, her questions. Um, gandang tanghali po kung sa, kahit po sa camera na lang tayo. Trending lang po kasi ngayon sa social media yung pagkamatay po nung Golden Retriever na si Kiluwa sa Camarines Sur. So namatay po siya sa uh, pinalo-palo po kasi siya. Uh, so ngayon po may panawagan, even celebrities are calling po na pabigatin na po yung parusa under the Animal Welfare Act. Kasi parang ngayon po yata, one year lang po yata and yung kulong and then yung penalty po na yung fine po is 100,000 lang. So, meron na po ba tayong bill dito sa House? Kasi sa Senate po, meron na po silang pinupush na nasa Agri Committee po. Thank you po. Um, I think when I was reading on this one, uh, and I believe it was also from the statement of uh, Senator Grace, I, I, I believe, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, she has passed, or rather she has filed uh, a Senate bill that calls for the um, increase of penalties uh, re regarding the, uh, to amend uh, RA 8485, which is the Animal Welfare Act. Um, but also in the in the specific uh, Republic Act, um, I believe that uh, NGOs are also uh, required, or not really, uh, they are um, encouraged to help in the enforcement of the protection of the animals, be it uh, through rescue or rehabilitation. But let me circle back that um, any form of animal abuse, and in this case even more gravely, the killing of that golden retriever, because I own eight dogs, no? and eight dogs may seem a lot, but you know, uh, when you look at single, uh, single kasi, kaya maraming aso eh. Pero when you own so many animals that you care for and you and you really give the attention to, uh, it it really hurts, no? As as a uh, as a an animal lover, na but yun pa kaya yun pa yung ginawa, no? I mean, I'd understand siguro kung tinakot niya para hindi lumapit, no? Or or if anything, na uh, onting pitik lang para lang umalis, no? Uh, pero to kill the animal already speaks of the motive, no? That there was really an intent to end the life of that animal. So, you know, um, I think to me it is tantamount to to to. I mean, it is murder, straight up murder. It may not involve another human being, pero to an animal who is loved and cared by its owner, masakit din na bagay yun. And uh, if I'm not so sure, I cannot speak on behalf of Congress if there is a bill already uh, to increase. Maybe my colleagues can say, but if ever there is, then we'd support it definitely. Um, well, as a animal lover myself, I have 13 dogs. My family and I have 13 dogs. Uh, so, so don't be surprised. Don't sa mga susunod na congressman pag sinabi nila meron sila ng 20 dogs. 30 dogs no? No, but seriously, ako po, kami ng family namin, we have a lot of dogs. And nung nalaman ko po yung balita na yun nga nangyari, di siyempre... You know, it's sad and and of course it's unfortunate. And it is indeed uh, a wake up call for us legislators to revisit the law and to find out if it will require stiffer penalties and when it comes to enforcement, what should be done. Siguro kailangan din natin tingnan kung paano din po natin palalakasin yung mga local government units in enforcing this. Kasi sila naman po talaga yung nasa grassroot. Sila naman po talaga yung nasa baba. Dapat siguro mapalakas din po natin yung makakayahan ng mga local government units to address you know issues such as animal welfare and proper care of, um, of, of animals for that matter. So I do share the sentiments of Senator Grace Poe. Uh, my heart bleeds when I heard about the news, and I will support any investigation and legislation uh, to promote animal welfare dito po sa ating bansa. Well, uh, to add, no, and uh, may I just be clarified, Kong Chino, you have eight dogs. You don't eat dogs, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. So yung rinig, <laughs> yun yung rinig I dito. have... I only have eight, eight dogs. dogs. Eight. Right. Yes. Eight. I don't, yeah, no, no, you no. You don't no, no, eat no. dogs. Yeah. Dagdagan ko na isa para hindi naman. Anyway, 
Um, kung si Kong Chino may walo, si Kong JJ may bente, eh ako po may wildlife, may animal zoo. Okay? Hindi, joke lang. Anyway, um, yes, I think it would, be, it would be the best time for us to revisit this uh, animal, animal Welfare Act. And uh, as mentioned, tama po, the uh, maximum penalty of imprisonment uh, for the violation of the, uh, for instance, a killing of an animal is uh, six months to one year of imprisonment uh, with the penalty or a fine of uh, not exceeding 100,000 pesos. But uh, then again, I would like to address also another issue. I guess the lack of awareness of the people that there is a legislative, uh, there is a law, uh, there's an aiming law that protects the animal welfare. So I guess that should also be addressed by the uh, local government units, by the barangays, and the other the NGOs. And that is why I urge the uh, Philippine Animal Welfare Society to look, to look into uh, this uh, matter because ang nakikita ko kasi dito is the end does not justify the means. Although sinasabi po doon sa balita na ito daw po ay nangangagat, na may merwisyo, pero hindi naman po tama na dapat umabot tayo sa punto na patayin mo yung, yung aso. So kung may mga kailangan gawin, eh, we, we can also ask the assistance of the, uh, the, uh, the local government unit, the barangay officials, etc. Huwag po tayo abot dito sa karumaldumal. Eh, kahit animal po yan, mga alagang hayop, eh, may mga damdamin din po yan. So again, uh, let's also intensify the uh, awareness that there is a law that punishes for the cruelty, for any kind of uh, violence na ginagawa ho natin sa ating pong mga alagang hayop. Uh, thank you po, Kong. Um, last question na lang po on my part kay Kong Chino po. Pero uh, baka po yung iba po gusto na rin po mag-chime in. Meron pong uh, parang na, uh, local news po na napaulat po na may isang individual po sa Mati. It's under po your district na namatay po or pinatay po siya habang nag-aabang po siya nung for ayuda po sa DSWD. Uh, meron po ba tayong tulong for the family? And uh, baka lang din po, time na rin po ba na Silipin ulit kung paano po yung mas safe na way po ng pagbibigay po ng ayuda. Kasi, um, di ba po naging issue na rin siya nung uh, last year po nung namatay po nun si Gov. De Gamo na may mga nadamay po na um, innocent or civilians na during time po na nagbibigay din po ng ayuda kasi. Yan lang po. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, so, uh, as as terrible as it sounds, um, the PNP has been very uh, has been zeroing in on the circumstances surrounding the incident. So, to the information of everybody, there was a shooting incident in uh, Mati City, particularly in Barangay Signs, where there is a 41 year old farmer who was shot and killed. Haba nagantay siya ng ECT payouts ng uh, DSWD in response uh, because of yung nangyaring floods sa amin. Now it was a very concerning. Uh, it was very concerning mainly because number one, it was done in a place where andaming tao din na nakapaligid. It was very public in um, in in yeah. Uh, it was a very public area. And number two. Um, I talked with the um, police, uh, the, the Philippine National Police, particularly sa provincial office. Now, this is uh, this is a situation that calls for the visibility, the further visibility of our men in uniform. Now, uh, upon an investigation, they have reported to me that the victim in quest, uh, the victim is a 41-year-old uh, farmer, as what was mentioned. And at the same time, he also has had previous cases of uh, misdemeanors, of, uh, of uh, dati na rin siyang, uh, he was also jailed before for different cases. And uh, they said that it was an act of revenge, yung nangyari. Pero yung ginawa ng the, the murderer, um, what he did was tinaiming niya during the ECT payout. Now, as a as government officials who who regularly bring the services of the national government to the people through yung sa pagbibigay ng ayuda and the like it is uh, very concerning because um, this is a usually yung sa pagbibigay ng ayuda is usually a place where we can interact with the people with our district 
you know, with with our with our beneficiaries and to give them the help that they need. But to course it through that kind, the to course the act of murder through that kind of event, very concerning Shah. So um I've already talked with the uh, 701st Brigade uh, of the Philippine uh, milita uh, of the military and as well as uh, PNP that there should really be uh, there should they should increase their visibility in the areas on where there is, there are government uh, uh, government events that are happening because I think no uh, not it, it is very simple really the safety and wellness of all your constituents is your top one priority. So for that to replicate to the other areas too uh, would be ideal. No. So again, um, it's saddening that that has happened and we are doing our 100% effort to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Thank you, Kat. Uh, Tina Nolasco from DWIC. Hello po, good afternoon. Uh, regarding po ito sa NAIA, recently po binuhay po ni Finance Secretary Ralph Recto yung panawagan niyang pagbebenta ng assets ng NAIA at ng iba pang government uh, uh, assets para daw pambayad ng utang. Any reaction po regarding that? Uh, I, have, I have yet to uh, hear the statements of Secretary Recto. Um, with regards to that, um, but when it comes to um, increasing and improving revenue collection, we are fully supportive of the efforts of the Department of Finance. Um, but with regards to the selling of certain assets or privatization, I know uh, a lot of government agencies and departments are looking into this. Um, but kung ano po kasi yung specific na assets na yon, siguro i reserve ko na lang yung comments. Uh, pag nalaman ko na po kung ano po yung mas specific na assets. Okay. Any reaction po from uh, It's usual practice naman, uh, not only for the national government, even in the, yung local government po natin. Um, but again, siguro aaralin pa nilang maigi yan eh. May, meron namang cost, uh, ano yan eh, uh, benefit, mga ganon. Inaaral usually yan. And, we know that Secretary Ralph is, ano, is uh, one of the best in terms of uh, finance. Kaya nga, nandyan po siya at uh, nung tinawag siya ng Pangulo para mag-lead. But it, it does happen, pero it has, to, it has to be for the best interest of the country. Thank you. Well, uh, sa akin, I'm sure any move to proceed, for example, privatization of some assets of the government uh, would definitely have a solid reason for former congressman and now Secretary of Finance to do, to, to propose, no? Hindi naman agad-agad binibenta yung mga assets. Uh, well, common sense would dictate if you are having trouble maintaining a certain asset, of course, naturally, you would rather have somebody else do the maintenance rather than uh, ano, kayo ang mag-maintain na hindi mo naman kaya and definitely uh, it would also base, uh, boils down to the issue of better service and better ano, uh, Im improvement on, on, the, on the said asset. So ako, hindi ako, ako op open ako personally. I'm open to any form of ano, uh, ways in order to probably to add on to a possible revenue collection or probably makabayad ng utang, walang problema sa akin doon. Kasi ultimately, we're talking about government finance and we have to be practical about that. If it's too overburdened for the government to maintain such asset, asset tas may willing naman to better the service, uh, why not, di ba? If that would also translate into additional income in order to pay the debts uh, of our national government. Sabi ko nga, I have full confidence in Secretary Recto's ano, ability to navigate this area kasi yun po yung expertise niya. Yeah, on a final note, no, um, again, reiteration ko lang, uh, unquestionable talaga yung wisdom ni uh, Secretary Ralph Recto pagdating po sa area ng finance. And as, being a former colleague, um, we have you know utmost respect for his um, capacity to serve as the um, Secretary of Finance. Um, 
But when it comes to privatization, we really need to be able to uh, see the details. Uh, kung ano po ba yung mga nais na ibenta at anong nais ma-dispose ng mga assets ng ating pamahalan. Kung ito po ba ay anong epekto naman ito sa ating bansa. Like for example, um, I know for PAGCOR's uh, position, they want to privatize some of their assets. I'm fully supportive of it. I think there's nothing wrong for PAGCOR to privatize um, some of the casinos that they run and operate because I don't see the wisdom why you should be the operator and the regulator at the same time. Uh, government should be only exercising uh, one uh, activity and that is um, to regulate. So, ayan na natin i-operate to. Tapos, kung i-operate private sector at kung uh, mapapaganda nila yung operasyon at may karagdagang kita para sa ating pamahalaan, why not? But again, there are certain assets of government that we need to hold close to our heart. Dahil these assets may uh, have direct consequence to national security. These assets might have direct consequence to uh, patrimony and sovereignty. So, siguro tingnan lang po natin kung ano yung mga specific assets na binabanggit po ni Secretary Recto para makapag Bigay din po kami ng tamang opinion. Thank you, Tina. Uh, due to time constraints, I appeal to our uh, media friends uh, not to repeat the uh, questions that have already asked. Uh, Kenneth Basilio from uh, Business World, you're recognized. Magandang tangali po. Uh, yung first question ko po about sa RBH number 7. So yung isa sa mga talking points during the discussions nga on RBH number 7 eh uh, makakapagpababa ng uh, consumer costs for sa mga public utilities kung may papasa ang RBH number 7 uh, could the panel expound uh, why they hold uh, such view po yes absolutely um, i think that's one of the advantages of opening up the economy is makaka invite po tayo na mas maraming uh, uh, industry players pagdating sa area ng utilities. Uh, pag dumami po ang mga players natin sa utilities, magkakaroon ng healthy competition. Pag magkaroon po ng healthy competition, ang magiging epekto nito, gaganda ang serbisyo at kung gaganda ang serbisyo, maghahabol yan sa pinakamagandang presyo. Pagdating sa ganong sitwasyon, at least may bibigay natin sa Pilipino yung talagang nakakaayon at mapapaganda para sa kanila. Hindi tulad sa sitwasyon natin ngayon na nakikita po natin na iilan lamang ang, ang may hawak ng mga malalaking negosyo na siyempre hindi natin may tatanggi. Um, baka nag-uusap lang sila kung ano ang mga um, pre presyuhan at pagdating sa mga bilihin. So ako... Isa po tulot sa magandang maidudulot ng RBH7 is inviting more competition into the country, providing more opportunities. And I think when it comes to um, utilities and services, um, we can be assured that the Filipinos will get the best price for their peso when it comes to the services that they um, um, should be afforded to by government or by any sector for that matter. Okay. Uh, yung second question ko po, uh, okay, still on RBH number 7 pa rin naman. Uh, ang sabi ng mga iilang ekonomista, hindi lang sasapat na buksan nga ang mga tight uh, economic restrictions sa ating constitution. Uh, kinakailangan na rin daw na strengthen yung ibang government instrumentalities in relation, may naisip na ba ang Congress na mga measures uh, which could help ano nga, uh, actualize yung pagpasok nga ng more foreign direct investments? Well, um, of course, um, thank you for your question. Isa din po yun talaga sa mga pinag-aaralan po namin sa Kongreso ngayon. Kasi ayaw naman natin na sa kanilang kami gagawa ng mga legislation pag naaprubahan na yung RB87. So may mga small group discussions na po kami 
uh, within the committees and within amongst ourselves in what specific agencies and departments needs to be strengthened, needs to be supported, needs to be upgraded so that we can make sure that um, we can properly cater to um, the influx of foreign direct investments into the, into the country. Isa, la, isa po dyan yung uh, ease of doing business. I think we need to be able to improve on this uh, specific uh, issue pagdating sa national government, pagdating sa uh, local government. Um, kailangan din po natin ma-streamline yung, bro yung bureaucracy para sa ganon, hindi na po daang-daang uh, signatures ang kinikailangan ng isang investor na may secure para lang maitayo ang kanyang uh, negosyo dito sa ating bansa oras na malift po natin yung mga economic restrictions. Um, other than that, we're also looking at how to minimize red tape in the bureaucracy just so that we can assure uh, the investors that their investments are properly uh, well taken care of by the state, by the local government, or by the national government, whoever uh, government instrumentality it may land on. So ilang po ito sa mga tinatalaki at pinag-uusapan po namin sa Kongreso ngayon. Uh, pagpapakita po ito na uh, forward thinking po ang uh, leadership ni Speaker Martin Romualdez when it comes to improving the economy. We want to make sure that um, after step one, step two, and step three are also in place just so that we can send the right signal to the world that the Philippines is ready for more investments coming in. No? To, to add lang to Kong JJ, uh, natouch niya yung competitiveness, of course, pag dumarating po yung mga, yung mga foreign investors, foreign companies. It will also have a direct effect to government-owned and operated uh, corporations kasi kailangan sumabay ng government sa services na naibibigay ng mga private uh, entities to ensure na yung people who can't afford private options can go to the government pero kailangan at par din sila with our with our other private companies as well thank you meron lang ako idagdag kasi na mention ni DSJJ yung ease of doing business eh may di ba may alam ko may batas na tayo doon eh uh, this is prior to the in, I think prior to the passing of the public utility yung ano public service Public Service Act. Uh, ako ang possible is if, if we can open up all these this laws, kasi ang Public Service Act is pending, may, may questions sa Supreme Court. Eh. Uh, if we can revisit this law and maybe improve on, first, we need also to make sure that the capital, foreign capital, those foreign companies will be investing their country. Their capital will also be protected, meaning hindi yung agad-agad we can already change the, 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 the rules of the uh, you know the rules in the, in the middle of the ball game. Of course, when you come capital, you also need assurance that your money will be there. And for a certain number of years, kikita ka doon. So, kailangan makita din natin yung aspect ng ganon. Ano yung pupuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuyipuy
especially na anticipated na nga yung 2025 midterm elections, uh, paano makaka-apekto yung campaign period sa legislative work ng uh, measures? Well, I was there in the LEDAC. Well, f f from the position of, well, I'd, I'd like to, of course, welcome um, our senior deputy speaker, uh, deputy, senior deputy speaker, uh, Don Gonzalez. Siguro she, he'd want to join us kasi kasama din namin siya sa LEDAC kahapon. In fact, si uh, senior deputy speaker, siya po yung author ng procurement law. Isa po ito sa prioritize ng ating uh, mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos na dapat maipasa na. Um, pagdating po sa uh, legislative agenda, SONA priorities, tulad ng sinabi ko, dito po sa House of Representatives under the leadership of Speaker Martin Romualdez, we've completed it 100%. Advance pa nga po kami. Uh, no back subjects. At yung ilan na hinihingi pa ng NEDA, naaprobahan na po namin to sa sa kongreso. So, sa palagay naman po namin, uh, hindi magiging uh, dahilan ang kampanyahan para maapektuhan yung legislative efficiency namin dito sa kongreso dahil we've already taken that into consideration when it comes to the bills, resolutions, at, and laws that needs to be passed. So, um, naka-timetable naman po yan. At syempre, may uh, um, time on target pong siniset ang ating majority leader, Manix Dalipe, pagdating sa passage ng mga batas na ito. Siguro, uh, upang mas mabigyan po tayo ng uh, further development on the procurement law, um, siguro mabigyan po natin ng pagkakataon our senior deputy speaker, uh, Dong Gonzalez, para sa updates on the uh, procurement law na ginawang urgent ng ating mahal na Pangulo. Well, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker Jay, at sa aking mga kasama dito sa Kongreso. Pinilit ko makahabol at eksakto ang um, procurement law ang pinag-usapan. Ako po ang uh, principal author ng amendment of the Well, I'm calling this as Bagong Pilipinas Government Procurement Act. At ito, eh, this is the Amendment of Republic Act 9184. So, yung salient points po nito, eh, parang very friendly na po yung ating uh, procurement. So, from 120 days, pwede na po tayong mga 27 days, starting from the advertisement up to the uh, notice of award, notice to proceed, and uh, signing of contract and one publication only. Number two, we have strengthened the planning department of each agencies para po uh, mapalakas po natin yun kasi it emanates everything on the planning department. Uh, so to speak, uh, DOTR, Department of Public Works, uh, kung wala kang plano, kung wala kang BOQ, kung wala kang tinatawag na <clears throat> diet, Yung diet na tinatawag is uh, detailed architectural engineering design. So kung wala ka po nun, hindi ka pwedeng mag-bid. Kahit two weeks lang po yun, hindi mo pwedeng i-award yung project kung wala kang documents, wala kang bill of quantities, wala kang program of works. Yun po ang uh, nistrengthen ko ngayon. Number three, uh, pinapaalis ko na po yung, uh, yung uh, post-audit, uh, yung post-qualification para po sana mabilis na lahat. Kasi hindi ka naman pwedeng ma-qualify ma sa isang uh, subasta kung hindi ka pre-qualified uh, at lehitimong uh, uh, negosyante or contractor. So lahat-lahat, the summation of that from day one up to the final contract and notice to proceed. So nasa 27 days na lang po, pwede na po tayo mag-start. And the bottleneck, yun na po ang sinasabi ko na yung planning department. Yung planning department po kasi, in the likes of Department of Public Roads and Highways, we need 15,000 personnel. Material engineer, architect, civil engineer, mechanical engineer, DOTR, ganyan din po. So nag-usap po kami ni Secretary Mina na kailangan uh, <clears throat> kuha pa tayo ng maraming mga uh, te technical expertise para ma ma matulungan at ma-augment ma natin dito sa Procurement Act. Kahapon, kausap ko po si Sekmina, willing naman siya na wag natin biglayin 
kung pwede one-fourth muna and then one-half para at least hindi, hindi mabigla kasi it, kasama dyan yung Civil Service Commission kasi pag kubuha ka ng tao, kailangan plantilyado yan, kailangan ni Civil Service Commission yan. So, yung status po ngayon ng Procurement Act, nag-usap po kami ni, ni Senate President Mig Subiri kahapon, uh, sabi ko, uh, pinakikiusap ko po, uh, hopefully today is the second reading and there are still uh, two interpolators in the floor. Uh, they are in the process of interpolation. So, palagay ko po, uh, matatapos po nila itong uh, procurement o act ng second reading up to this uh, day. So, ang gusto ko po sana, uh, kung po pwede, eh, kami dalawa ni Sekmina, uh, ni Speaker, gusto talaga babilis itong procurement act. Kasi po, ito hinahantay na. Judiciary, hinahantay na po to. Executive, hinahantay na po to. So talaga po ito ay napaka-importante nga uh, uh, priority measures ng ating Pangulo. Uh, bigyan ko yung, po kayo ng halimbawa. Uh, yung uh, Supreme Court, Supreme Court, there are uh, pipeline projects all over the country. Kulang po sila sa courtrooms. Pero hindi po nila ma mabid kaagad because kailangan maamienda po natin yung ating, uh, yung ating uh, Republic Act 9184. So... Ang sabi po ni Sen Mi Senate, si Senate President Biggs na uh, pilitin daw na matapos, it's 100 pages, uh, for second reading today. So yun ang pwede kong may babalita sa inyo, yung procurement. Napaka-importante yung patas ito na priority measure ng ating Pangulo. So yun lang po. So sana po, this break, uh, ang aking uh, objective sana, kahit break po sana tayo, kung matter reading, Uh, pwede po tayong mag -bicam. pero kung, ia, kung they will adopt our, our version, wala na akong pag-uusapan dito. At lastly, yung tinatawag na sa GPPB, yung TSO, yung Technical Support Office, ngayon po kasi, ang nakaupo doon is only Executive Director and with Assistant to Directors. So, nag-usap po kami ng DBM with the Chairman, Uh, on the BICAM, we will amend and we will uh, uh, disagreeing provision na sana i-adapt po natin to At yung ED na yon magiging undersecretary at ASEC, ASEC, assistant secretary, but appointed by the president. So yun po ang pinapakiusap lang po ng ating Department of Budget and Management at malaking tulong po yun. So yun po, wala na pong pinag-uusapan yung... 120 days, ginawa po natin ng 60 days, hopefully, sa implementing rules and regulations. So maraming salamat po sa medyo mahaba po ata explanation ko. Salamat po. Thank you, SDS Dong. Uh, thank you, uh, Kenneth. Uh, last two questions from uh, Marian Enriquez of Channel 5 and Big Sumintak of uh, Net 25. Marian, you're recognized. Hi, good afternoon po. Uh, itong mga nakaraang araw po, mainit yung debate sa plenaryo tungkol po sa divorce bill. I understand, I recall po si Kong Ortega, natanong na po kayo noong nakaraang press con, and you are opposing this bill. You, you said you will vote against this bill. Pero sa iba po nating mga kong, kong yes, uh, ano po yung stand nyo po individually, briefly lang, isa-isa, ano po yung stand nyo on divorce bill? I can't relate, ha? <laughs> <laughs> no, pero um, I think the essence of the bill um, highlights the protection of any married uh, person to their spouse. And in, in that light, um, I think that there is a need to look into what are the ways that we can further protect those who are in unfair or in um, or in relationships, in marriages that are not uh, that are detrimental. No, so like say for example, I think because the spirit of the bill, we have to understand first that the spirit of the bill is what we need to look into first, and then afterwards we can look into what are the ways or the most uh, the best ways that we can inject this this um, the goal or the intent of what we are trying to achieve. If the intent is to protect those who are in uh, marriages that are not beneficial or detrimental marriages, if they are, let's say, for example, abused, then I think there are ways to uh, look into other uh, revisions of bills. So we can put also, we can introduce um, revisions, for example, to the annulment bill. No? Um, so there are many avenues. Uh, as, as, a, as somebody who is not married, um, I cannot say for sure 
However, um, I think uh, I think it just it's worth to, uh, looking into muna uh, even further. No, um, we've we already have so many bills in Congress and in, in in the country even. I think that there are many bills that require revisiting rather than to add even more bills then to our ano, to our existing number of bills. Well, as somebody who's married twice, <laughs> I can definitely relate to the issue. Ako naniniwala kasi ako eh, legislation is, is uh, should go hand in hand with the experience of man. So divorce is just a, uh, a recognition that there is really a problem. There are cases of bad marriages. No? Uh, ako, pro ako eh. In fact, I have signified my intent to be a co-author uh, of the bill. Uh, response po ito doon sa yung realistic po nangyayari. Of course, we do not want breakups. That's the last, last thing that we want. We do not want to um, to have so many divorces. No, If we can salvage a union, why not? But there are something that is beyond resuscitation. No, That is completely dead. Let's admit that. Dito sa Pilipinas, we allow annulment. But uh, ang alam ko, annulment is like pinapawalang bisa yung kasal as if wedding never, uh, it has never happened. No? I think we have to recognize that it did happen, but along the way, something came up at hindi nag-work out. Now, let's be honest about that. That's the problem and we need to find solution to it. There are so many cases of domestic abuse. Mostly the uh, cause of marriages, marriage breakups are because of violence, abuse, and violence at home, domestic abuse. We have to give way for, especially women, no? Ang mostly the victims. But there are also cases where breakups are caused by uh, the, the wife abusing the husband, diba? So it's actually, ano eh, it's actually admitting that there is really a problem, no? So ako, pagbor ako doon, let's, let's, if there's a, we, we allow the annulment, why not go with full, full, full speed and allow divorce? Uh, ako ang perspective po namin because I come from, from my own uh, community. We see marriage as a social contract. Eh. It's entered into between two consensus individuals. Anything that breaks that uh, ano, contract, one party can avail of the annulment of a contract. And it, it is a social contract. So ako pabor ako doon because number one, it addresses an issue, the elephant in the room. Uh, number two, it's uh, unhypocritical. Ba? It's being realistic in admitting that there is a, there are cases of bad marriages, which is beyond resuscitation, that the only way for both spouses is to go their separate ways. Bakit mo sila itatali kung wala ng pagmamahal sa bawat isa? Well, um... If we have members who are pro, and uh, if we have members also that are against, uh, personally, I'm not yet decided. No, <laughs> because uh, let's accept the reality that uh, in practice, sa annulment cases po kasi usually yung pong mga mag-asawa lang na may pera ang nakaka-avail nito, and this is limited under the Article 36 of the Family Code which is the physical, uh, psychological incapacity. And uh, my understanding of absolute divorce is a divorce that is uh, no fault clause. No? Ibig sabihin, uh, upon agreement of the spouses that they will end their marriage, they will go to a court, it on a notary public, and that with that document, their marriage is already ended. So that is my understanding of absolute divorce. And that is not divorce, is that that is not the divorce that is pending in the House of Representatives. And that is why um, until now um hindi pa po ako makapag decision. In fact, I'm, I'm still contemplating if uh, whether or not to interpolate also the sponsor to elicit from the sponsors what are their intentions in passing this bill. Dahil pwede naman kasi natin ilift yung grounds for legal separation, idagdag ho natin doon sa grounds for annulment. Because again, we are limited under Article 36 of the Family Code. That's the only uh, ground that we can uh, use in order to annul our marriages. 
And uh, so, pinag-aralan pinag, uh, pa natin. Uh, but the reality remains that uh, meron po talagang mga kababayan natin na lalong-lalo na po yung mga mahihirap, nakakulong na lang po doon sa marriage. And uh, hindi na po sila makapag-asawa uh, ulit because hindi naman na uh, wala silang kakayahan no na pumunta sa korte at uh, mag-file ng annulment cases because let us accept the reality that annulment case is a very expensive case and it's a very long uh, procedure so those are the matters na binabalanse ko pa and uh, sooner or later we will come up with the uh, position on regarding regarding the divorce bill um, ako naman personally you know being a Devout Roman Catholic, siyempre, ang upbringing natin is, you know, very conservative. But, you know, reality has to come in and step in that, you know, there are really marriages and 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 relationships that don't, you know, end in a happy ending. Uh, however, what I would rather see, siguro, dito sa debates are, number one, efforts to strengthen the family. Um, programs that would um, support uh, families that stay together. Uh, also, one of my concern is, of course, anong epekto nito sa mga bata? Ma kung dumating sa punto na magkakaroon ng paghihiwalay ang mag-asawa, uh, ano ang mga mental health issues na ma ma maaaring harapin ng mga anak? Meron ba tayong proper state intervention na pwedeng maibigay sa kanila? Meron bang mga DSW interventions na handang sumalo sa mga anak na mapapasama sa ganitong sitwasyon? Ilang po ito sa mga agam-agam uh, uh, ko patungkol dito sa issue na to. So, the process and the debates have indeed been enlightening for me as a legislator. And when the time comes for me to decide, I will definitely... Um, seek consultation with my constituents on this kung anong position ng mga taga 2nd District of Quezon patungkol sa usapin ng divorce at syempre bilang mambabatas at bilang boses nila sa Kamera de Representante yun din po ang boses at boto na maririnig nila pagdating sa usapin ng divorce Thank you uh, mix of intact or well, uh, uh, last question? Ray, pwede ko lang i-add, baka makalimutan ko lang. Sir. Go ahead, sir. Kasi yung procurement para uh, kahapon nag-usap din, by, siguro by May, uh, when we assume on, uh, resume on uh, April 29, at palagay ko ma-sassign by the President, at pinag-usapan po namin ni Senate President, mix yun na may papasa by May, at uh, siguro po before so na okay na po yung ating procurement. Thank you po. Thank you, SDS Dong. Yes, Big, go ahead. Magandang hapon po. Since uh, today is the last day of the session, and I am the last uh, asked to ask the uh, last question, going back to the uh, main agenda of the last day of session, which is the RBH number seven of the House of Representatives. So I would like to premise my question and point on uh, Article 6 of the uh, Constitution, which is the bicameral system of our legislative department. So, uh, mamaya, good as approved na kasi nasa third reading na po kayo. But sa Senate, nasa subcommittee pa lang siya. Then the game plan uh, is to submit the uh, approved RB7 diretso na sa COMELEC. And then maghihintay na lang kung mayroong question sa Supreme Court for the constitu uh, constitutional challenge ng uh, uh, action ng Kamara. So my question is, ito ba'y part ng strategy ng House of Representatives to put pressure on uh, the Senate regarding the economic cha-cha? Dahil nauna na kayo sa RB7, diretso na sa COMELEC, kung mayroong question sa Supreme Court, ito ba'y strategy to pressure the Senate para actionan nila din yung kanilang RB6. Uh, um, let me just clarify the, the position. No? Uh, there's no strategy in place. Um, we were just merely following what is uh, written in the Constitution. But the most prudent uh, action to be taken, at ito na rin po yung directive ng ating Speaker Martin Romualdez, 
is after we approve it on third and final reading, let's take advantage of the break. Kausapin natin yung mga counterparts natin sa Senate para magkaroon tayo ng unified position moving forward. And dito po malalaman natin kung ano po ang magiging hakbang patungkol sa RB87. Now, when it comes to pressure on the Senate, yes, there is pressure on the Senate dahil tapos na yung version ng House. So, uh, and of course, not only pressure from the House, but siguro yung everyday life at saka yung mga pronouncement ni Presidente patungkol sa um, economic uh, restrictions that need to be lifted, I think that's enough pressure also for the Senate to work with haste. But of course, that doesn't mean that we cannot respect the legislative process that they have to go through. But of course, this is not the legislative process, but rather the constituent power inherent to us. So, tamang-tama po talaga itong pagkakataon na makakausap at makaka magkikita po yung mga leadership ng Senate at Congress to find the best way forward with regards to RB86 and RB87. So, clarification ng uh, Congressman Suarez. So, after na mag-usap kayo during the break, saka nyo isasabit sa COMELEC or isasabit na sa COMELEC saka kayo mag-uusap? Um, mag-uusap muna kami. Ah, okay. So, mag-uusap muna kami tapos malaman natin kung ano yung proper course. Kasi ang iniiwasan natin dito ay dumami yung mga constitutional challenges. Kasi ngayon pa lang, hindi pa po namin inaaprobahan ito on third and final reading. Ang dami na nagsabi na ang daming constitutional questions that are that will be raised and that will be uh, addressed and forwarded to the Supreme Court once approved. So what's important for us is to limit all these impediments by having a unified position by the House and by the Senate moving forward. But kami dito sa House, ang nais namin is mangyari ito in the soonest possible time. Huwag naman yung paabuti natin yung plebisito ng kasabay ng midterm elections. Kasi ako personally, ang position ko, hindi po natin pwede mapoliticize ang ating saligang batas. Pangalawa, the Filipino people should properly understand and decide on the Constitution solely, specifically, on that issue and topic alone and not to be distracted by who's running for what position, who's running for this, anong senators ang pipiliin ko, sino ba itong mga kumakandidato sa mayoral position, governor at congressman, kasi masyado ng magiging magulo ang isip ng Pilipino na dapat kung constitution lang, kung constitution lang pinag-uusapan natin. Sir, uh, lang one last point doon sa RBH number 7. So mag-uusap kayo, tapos... Mayroon pa bang enough time? Kasi supposed to be ang original na agreement ninyo before the Linton break, tapos na sa House. Sa Senate, paano? Ma ma sa ang sabi kasi ang apprehension, uh, majority of the congressmen, particularly the House leadership, yung window of opportunity, nagsasara na siya eh. Kasi aabutan na kayo ng, ng SONA, the deliberation of the budget and the filing of the uh, COC. Yeah. yeah. So may time pa. Um, parati naman po may oras pa. <laughs> Hindi naman po kami nawawala ng pag-asa sa kanila. But sana maunawaan din po nila. Tulad ng sinabi mo, uh, lumiliit po yung window of opportunity natin dito. Because once we get to election mode, campaign mode, following the October filing. Uh, of course, we're going to have a new set of Congress, 20th Congress na pag-uusapan natin dito. So again, panibagong proseso na naman. So kaya nga kami, ang nais namin, eh, sa soon as possible time, makapag-uusap. Dahil sa pamamagitan ng pag-uusap, doon natin madedetermine yung pinakamabilis at pinaka, uh, magandang paraan para may sakatuparan po natin yung RBH6 at RBH7. Okay. One last na lang. Congressman na Adyong, any update regarding the Hodge Bill? Oh, yes. Uh, ongoing po yung investigation natin sa Hodge 2022 and 2023. And I, 
I think there's already a bill that uh, that was referred to the Committee on Muslim Affairs to, I believe, to privatize young hard services on that particular component under the RA 9997, which is the Charter for the National Commission Muslim Filipinos. And this is brought about by the fact that for the several years since 2000, I think since time immemorial, if I can remember, but yung pinaka problema lumabas in 2022 up to 2023, yung problema doon sa lack of uh, yung very poor na quality na services na nakukuha ng ating mga Muslim pilgrims every year. Remember, ang Hajj po, it's not just a religious event. You can call that like a, a, a convention of many of, you know, of all over the world, of people, many countries have been sending their delegation to Saudi Arabia from the United States, all over the world, among Muslims. So it's it's an international event. No, It's a perfect way for also us to, to show to do the world that uh, the Philippines is capable of sending delegates and also capable of providing opportunities for these delegates to mingle with other Muslim countries from other um, Muslims from other countries. So it's a it's a uh, international event. So anakita po natin don. I guess ako I'm open to any possible reforms that we may introduce in the in the Hajj. No, ang aking nakita lang kasi yung current setup is that yung NCMF is the one not only regulating but actually enter into contracts with local providers that should have been give that that actually as, as aspect should have been given to uh, private entities like traveling agencies etc so yun ang nakikita ko eh. kasi if you sabi ko nga ni uh, boss JJ you can't do regulation at the same time ano ikaw yung mag enter into a direct right. business operation diba so you have to be the regulator and then allow private entities to come in and play around. But you have only have to regulate. Uh, so I'm open to that. But I, I would like to see first whether how can the NCMF as, a, uh, as the official uh, agency of the government to Saudi Arabia during Hajj season be able to at least uh, regulate niya yung and designate niya at certify niya yung mga legitimate traveling agencies. Because we also do not want this uh, may expose and maybe ma abuse ng mga other elements na gagawin itong paraan platform for them to send you know mga illegal recruitments etc et so gusto rin natin may dun certain regulation at the same time to better the service uh, during Hajj so yes i'm open to any possible amendments to the NCMF charter and at the same time i'm also open to the possibility of privatizing the Hajj services thank you big uh, to to uh, to our honorable uh, house leaders uh, if you have any short uh, uh, closing statements uh, please share it with us thank you uh, mga kaibigan natin sa media at least nakahabol po ako at uh, at least nasabi ko po sa inyo yung uh, procurement act uh, maraming salamat po uh, uh, masasabi ko lang po para yung ating absorptive capacity eh, gumanda naman uh, yung mga nanonood uh, na nasa Saudi Arabia, nasa abroad, minsan ang objective nila magpagawa ng bahay. Minsan may naipon na silang pera, hindi sila makagalaw. Why? Kasi okay, gusto kong magpagawa ng bahay. Pero nandiyan yung pera hindi nagagalaw kasi wala silang plano. So this is yung rasyonale eh, ng aking sinasabi. Kahit may pera tayo, maamienda natin yung, konstitu yung konstitusyon. Maamienda natin yung, yung procurement act. Kung wala tayong, yung sinabi ko kanina, plano, hindi tayo pwedeng umusad. Kaya kailangan po, we have to strengthen those departments as I have told you a while ago. So to all of you, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. At uh, sana po, uh, makita-kita po tayo muli sa April 29. Thank you po. Uh, we'd just like to thank the, our friends from the media, of course, and... I'd like to take this time to greet, of course, uh, ang amin pong city. It's our founding anniversary po ng city of San Fernando. Thank you. Um, again, to our media partners and friends, maraming maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na uh, maliwanagan namin kayo uh, sa mga issues na uh, hinaharap ng uh, ating bansa. 
Binabati ko po yung mga mamamayan ng Segunda Distrito, mga mamamayan ng Lunsun na Lucena, Sariaya, Candelaria, Chaong, Dolores at San Antonio. Um, Magkikita-kita uh, po tayo at sa lahat ng mga Pilipino na babiyahe ngayon pong uh, Holy Week break, sana ligtas po kayo. Sana mag-enjoy po kayo but sana wag din po natin hahayaan na lumampas ang pagkakataon na magkaroon din po tayo ng self-reflection, magkaroon din po tayo ng pagkakataon na maintindihan kung ano ba ang kailangan natin gawing maganda para sa ating pamilya, para sa ating bansa. Maliban sa pagdadasal sa ating pamilya, sana isama din po natin sa ating panalangin ang ikagaganda at ikabubuti ng administrasyon ng ating Pangulo at ng Bansang Pilipinas. Yun lamang at maraming salamat. Uh, una sa lahat, magandang hapon and uh, it's nice to engage again with our media partners, mapag-usapan kung ano yung mga importanteng bagay uh, at mapakinggan din po yung punto per punto ng ating uh, position po ng ating mga uh, membro ng Congress kong, uh, ng House of Representatives at may share po sa inyo yung collective position din po ng mga bagay-bagay patungkol sa mga important ng mga issue of the day, no? especially on the RBH 7 and many others. So it's uh, I'm always glad to have this opportunity to, again, uh, discuss these uh, matters with our media partners. And uh, gusto ko lang pong batiin again, uh, alam kong nabati ko na kaninang umaga, pero gusto ko rin pong batiin uli yung ating mga kam mga kapatid na mga nananampalatay ng Islam na uh, ng Happy Ramadan po at magandang hapon po sa atin lahat. Okay. So, sayang wala si, si Kong Jill. Um, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, our friends from the media no? sa lahat ng mga questions ninyo. Um, and uh, we hope that we've answered all your questions to the best, uh, to at least, you know, um, of... Uh, to the intent, with the intent that you wanted clarification on whatever we have had to offer in terms of our uh, our answers, and I'd also like to take this opportunity to greet uh, everyone from my district, mga Bisaya sa Davao Oriental, na mayong hapon kaninyong tanan. And again, uh, as we go into our Holy Week, no, and as well as to our, to our uh, Muslim brothers and sisters in their Ramadan. Um, that uh, friendly reminder to everyone that uh, lahat dapat tayo maging kaibigan sa isa't isa, maging chino ka man. So again, maraming salamat sa lahat and uh, have, a, <laughs> have a happy recess din to all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Senior Deputy Speaker Dong, uh, Young Guns uh, members and uh, House Assistant Majority Leaders Paolo, Sia Ingil, and Congressman Chino. And of course, to our...